So as a bonus for the three-day quantum physics event, I want to share a beautiful conversation I had last week during the three-day live event around visibility with Annika. So Annika is one of my clients who is currently in one of my experiments. And when we were having this conversation, I think we were at day 22 or something. And the reason why I do these case studies is because I really generally find it interesting to discover like what is it actually that happens with my clients when they start working with me right because sometimes I have like a global ID but like the depth or the in-depth details that's like always like a bit of a mystery for me so a while ago I started doing these case studies and uh, with Annika what really surprised me so she signed up for the 30-day experiment because she actually wanted to attract in new soul clients but as soon as she entered the portal she was like oh my god i feel like this portal is first gonna serve uh, my relationship with myself and with my husband and from that place all those things that i desire all the business goals and like the new clients that will just be an automatic um, effect basically from that transformation so um, it is so interesting to hear what she got out of her experiment while she was still in the middle of it, right? Because this was reported at day 22. And one of the profound things that really stuck with me was that she said my OCD, my obsessive compulsive behavior, got less. And that really made my like my heart jump a little bit because if you think about the quantum physics and if you think how everything is connected to each other, you can pretty well imagine that once your whole nervous system gets more relaxed and once you um, use like when you get out of those compulsive behaviors right because compulsion like obsessive compulsive behavior is literally just a way to control ourselves and give ourselves a like a false sense of stability and of course I know this because I have the expertise as a psychologist and I've worked for many years with people who have anxiety disorders and, and um, addictive patterns and everything eating disorders but my uh, me myself I I've I've become no stranger to those emotions. I have had severe anxiety as a child. Like I was really afraid of abandonment. So I would always want to be with my mom. I couldn't do sleepovers. Um, I couldn't do any of that stuff because I was just like so afraid that I would lose her. And then that sort of developed into obsessive compulsive behavior in a pretty yeah it was pretty significant right i would like have all my like all my jewelry had to be ordered in a specific way my shoes had to be positioned in a specific way if my mom would travel to the states for her work for example and she was in the airplane i was not allowed from myself to wear any of her clothes because i used to lend a lot of her clothes or borrow a lot of her clothes i wasn't allowed to do any of that up for myself because i had convinced myself that something bad would happen to her um, if I would do that I had specific underwear that I could absolutely not wear so I had all this underwear in my drawer that I would just not be allowed to wear because if I would wear it something terrible would happen um, and what is so interesting like whenever I got into a situation that um, caused like more insecurity so for example when I uh, moved house with my husband or when we bought our first house or like when there whenever there was like anxiety that tendency would get worse right and it is so interesting for me because I do really realize that I own like I, I I'll say that I probably don't suffer from like 99% is solved for me as well when it comes to the OCD like sometimes I still have a little tendency to sort of be with specific jewelry that I'm like oh if I wear this jewelry I'm like I get more clients or something that's still a little bit of a thing that I have but I'm trying to work through that as well but I would say like 99% is resolved but to find out in this uh, recording in this case study that she actually like sort of healed from her OCD or it got way less in those 20 days yeah it, it was like really proof as well of how important this work is because like I said everything is connected so if we if we become a more relaxed person everything can flow more in our life and 
like literally our soul can 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 work through us right and i believe we have such important work to do in the world um, i do believe the world is ready for new health care for new oh my goodness for new um um, for new healthcare, for 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 new school systems, um, for a new way of interacting with each other. Today, I listened to such an interesting audio around um, the the Scorpio season that we're entering, astro uh, from an astrologic uh, point of view. And we were before we were in Pisces, and um, one thing that they said that really resonated with me was that they said the the area where like struggle is the way to growth that's actually that has come to an end we are now entering like the scorpio season where that is no longer necessary of course you can still choose to grow through struggle but it's not necessary anymore and this is really something that resonated so much with me because like i said like ocd it's a way to create a false form of security because you basically say okay if i do this then i can prevent this from happening and you you do it because you have like you feel like you are not in control of your life and you're trying to get some form of control that's just like basically the whole philosophy behind addictive patterns right and like even when i got older i developed an eating disorder um so I would have this binge, I, I would binge eat and then I would like eat nothing for days. So I basically had bulimia, but then without the, the vomiting. And it was like a very self-destructive pattern. And again, that is because we want to create a sense of, um, um, we want to create a sense of stability in a world that feels unsafe, that feels like a scary place, that feels like, okay, we have to, be in control of right and um, um, yeah that's that's just like it is so interesting when we start letting go of those behaviors right and basically everything we do right even in our business in our relationships there's like some there's always like this tendency of like I have to stay in control I have to stay in control and it's just like so interesting to witness what happens once we let go, once we step out of that control mode. Because interestingly enough, once you step out of the control mode and you let the universe work through you, that's actually one of the things Annika said as well in the case study. She said, one of the things that I'm now good at, something I learned in these 22 days together, we are 30 now, but she was at 22 at that time. She was like, one of the things I really learned is to step back if I have the tendency to get into that control mode. So I think you can overlay that sometimes there is a situation that you feel like you just have to fix, right? Um, I have that with small examples. For example, when me and my husband decided on going to my mom and then all of a sudden last minute he changed, he wants to do something last minute, which makes me think, okay, we're probably gonna be late with my mom to my uh, at my mom's house. My tendency right away is to like let her know we're probably gonna be too late. Well, even I don't even know yet if we're gonna be too late, right? But those tendencies, right? And uh, for example, with clients as well, like if you feel like, okay, we're running out of clients, that you're always a little bit too early. And especially if you're a manifesting generator or a manifester, this tendency can be even more severe because uh, the manifester part in the manifesting generators and of course in the manifestors is that we always initiate, right? We really want to initiate. And um, for manifestors, that's actually very, uh, they can initiate to, to manifest the things that they desire, but manifesting generators and generators, we like manifesting generators can initiate a little and then generators really should like <laughs> relax way more even. Right. But it's really interesting uh, to combine it with all the different human design types. And basically, by the way, I have to mention that my new program, so it's showtime and the experiment and the event is not exclusively for manifesting generators. I really felt like in 2020, um, three i had to focus specifically on manifesting generators basically also to get my own group back and now i feel like okay i'm ready to really spread this knowledge to all the energy types because it is basically in essence where it comes down to is just giving you your full permission to be yourself right once you give yourself your full permission to be yourself 
that tendency to control everything, that sort of fades away. And it's just really interesting to witness what happens when you basically lean back a little bit more and let the let life unfold for you. And um, well, just listen to the interview with An- uh, Annika because it will give you a lot of insights around this specific topic. How can you actually let the universe unfold through you because that is something that we find very very difficult okay so this is just a bonus for day two if you want to listen to it it's optional i hope you do because i feel like it will give you a lot of insights and then um, tonight we'll actually gonna dive deeper into the 25 minute exercise for day two okay love you guys and um, um yeah uh, one more thing, I have to remind myself of saying that because my tendency is to not mention my programs. Um, but yeah, my my um, agreement with myself is that I am mentioning my programs because I do really believe that this work is so important and it's such a part of my bigger mission. So I want to remind you that you can still sign up for the experiment or for its showtime. Um, the experiment is fully focused on just the energy work and its showtime is a combination of energy work and visibility so that that sort of takes both sides right and i really love the it's showtime variant as well because i really love working with women who feel like i want to do the energy work but i want to do it because i want to become a better version of myself and give back to the world and give back to what the world like my beautiful opinions my beautiful energy and who really want to create that ripple effect so for those women showtime is absolutely the program to enter um and um yeah we're just gonna have an amazing time together so if you want more information about that go to sophiedipmar.com slash uh it's showtime so i t s showtime um, have a lovely evening and uh, or day when you're listening to this and like i said tonight we'll continue with part two of the quantum physics event so um I would just love, like, like I said, I just want to have an open conversation and see what comes up, right? But first and foremost, I'm just like interested to know, like, how long ago did you ever actually came into my energy field? Like, how long do you already know me? <laughs> well, I, that's really super funny because I like, I don't even know exactly how long ago, but I think you know when I tell you because you were having the podcast with Lou. Oh, you start? yes. How long ago is that? That is 2019. Yes, we did the lap of attraction. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's where I, 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 and again, I have no idea how, you know, I found you there, but that I listened to, to a few of those quite for a while. And then somewhere in between then and now, I stopped following you or you were not so much in my field. Mm-hmm. And then lately, I think now since a few months, I even signed up for like a few webinars and every time I could not make it. Mm. And the webinar came up, the last one about getting five soul clients mm. in 30 days. Yeah. I signed up and I really felt like, okay, I want to be, I want to be part of this one live because like watching the replays back, of course, but all the other ones I signed up, I, I did not even watch the replay, even though I wanted to, but live. <laughs> and for this one I signed up but I did not get the sign up link and I was really like not even thinking about it but just my body was like okay let's do it with my other email address it was like just yeah I just want to be email. part of this <laughs> I just want to be part of it and when in, when and I had something to do in the in the morning and I thought okay then I just um, start in the car I don't care but I <laughs> I want to be there live. So the first part I did in the car, then I came home and yeah, it was really funny. Yeah, interesting. And that's actually uh, the webinar that you uh, signed up for my portal that you're currently in, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. So can you guys, yes. can you tell maybe the other women who are present and I'm probably going to use this for a podcast as well, but can you tell the people like who you are and what you do? Okay. <laughs> yes. What I do, I do, of course, as a manifesting generator, multiple things. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I have one uh, business with another woman and we give intuition trainings for okay. children and for adults and also a teacher training. And, um, and I also do some coaching in, um, in, the, in schools, like for school teachers and management teams in schools. And it's actually also about intuition and about teaching and living or um, uh, from your essence. Mm -hmm. So it's like per training in personal development. But ne the, the third thing I do, and that's actually the thing that I'm most excited about at the moment, and I also am deciding to focus on that, it's uh, that I work with women. And yes, now I'm also going to work with men around sexuality, sensuality. Um, and I do that by coaching, but really in the way of bo with body work. Mm -hmm. Like, so not so much talking, but really with touch and so working with the energy field but also really working with the body and i work a lot with women who have like trauma sexual trauma mm. big or small and uh and i also work well i start working now also with couples about intimacy and i feel that there is a focus in my work or there's going to be a focus in my work now with women um, working around sensuality, sexuality after having a child. Ah, interesting. And also, and also with couples, like after becoming parents together. Oh, yeah. How do you manage that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. And I went, of course, in my own journey through the whole process. <laughs> process. Yeah. And I, yes. And now I feel like because I had that idea already for longer period of time but I thought okay but I'm myself in the middle of this process I first need to embody mm. what I want to give to others because when I start giving already to others and not to myself the, the full package yet mm. then it's out of balance so I really felt like ah, I've, I felt and I also used it as a motivation to get my own shit together mm. around this topic like before guiding others and it's yeah so it's it's also a win-win situation for yeah. sure yeah interesting and i like i'm always very visual and i remember i was walking i always remember the streets that i'm walking in when i'm thinking thinking back of the um, uh, voice memos but i received a voice memo from you uh because before we actually um started working together we exchanged some information and i wanted to know a little bit more about you and what it is that you do and what I really mm -hmm. love is when you explain that you also massage the inside of um, the vagina, right? Or um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's it, right? To make it more mm -hmm. soft. And um, mm -hmm. it's interesting because um, I actually, before I got pregnant, went to a, mm -hmm. a therapist who did that with me as well. And it was very mm -hmm. healing for me. It, then it wasn't mm -hmm. even actually a therapist. It was like a physiotherapist. So it wasn't really a spiritual mm -hmm. thing. But I think if that, if I could have gotten that in an even more soft and spiritual environment, it would have been maybe been even more healing. So I really love that mm -hmm. about the work that you do. And I feel like mm -hmm. it's not something that is very, that people are very open about, or it's very normal to say, oh yeah, I'm getting the inside of my vagina <laughs> massaged, right? That is like mm -hmm. interesting. So yeah. Okay. It is. And it's also what you say, like that is, Again, like still, still, like in my field, it's so it became so normal mm -hmm. that I'm sometimes also surprised of that in so many uh, settings it's not like normal. Like I see my brother sometimes like looking at me like when we are in a like a party with friends. Like what is he going to say? <laughs> like, <laughs> Don't give me <embarrassed>. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I love that. Okay, so. Um, you signed up in the webinar for the 30 day online retreat. That is what I called it at that time, because I had really this vision of working together with a group of women um, to really like recondition ourselves from everything that we know and to become the most aligned version of ourselves. I'm just curious, like what made you sign up? Like what was it that I said or what was it that really gave you that notch that you were like, you know what, I have to sign up for this this program? Yeah, I know exactly. Oh, interesting. Because yeah, it's really funny. Like when we were in the um, in the webinar, like I felt like that it was everything was resonating. And then at one point you said, because it, of course when you said like I had no idea of for example about the price mm. or but I 
just felt like already a yes. And then you said the sentence like, ah, oh, yeah, I feel that your soul already decided. Ah. And then I said, yeah, I feel that too. So like, I don't even care about the money. It's like, <laughs> yeah. And also before you also, I think it was in a, in a podcast or I'm not sure. Like you said, when somebody doesn't want to work with you or said, and then they say it's about the money, it's never about the money. Mm, yeah. And yeah, that's so true because, yeah. Yeah, it never is. And I truly believe like everybody on a soul level, they have like people already know they want to work with you or not. But sometimes the ego is just in the way. Um, so tell me a little bit, like we're still in the middle of the experiment, right? Because we were, we're working together 31 days. We're at this 22nd day. So usually I do these interviews when we're totally done and we're now in the middle. So it's a little bit different, <laughs> but I'm just curious, like, what was your, like, was like, if you look at your life before you entered the experiment mm -hmm. the online retreat so before the first of december and you look at your life now like what is the main thing that you feel is like really different in those 22 days right i know it's a short time but <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah well actually a lot like what is really different is that the for example like the exercises and the assignments we get they are not like super new to me like mm -hmm. i'm quite familiar with all the all of these exercises but they come in at a different level like i i also feel that they are transmuted like by you uh, with an with a yeah let's say like in a high vibration or in a really yeah is it yeah from the mist or the water like not from an ice cube yeah yeah, yeah. and i'm now able to receive and perceive and practice them from water and mist like it's so they come in on a on an new level or a deeper level let's let's say like a deeper level and i work with the exercises also on another level inside myself mm. so it's deeper and i feel it's more integrated mm -hmm. um i'm super aware of everything that's happening in my life right now so when i'm for example i for me now it's so clear when i'm in the ice cube or when i'm in the water or in the mist um so can i ask a yeah, question yeah. about that because i'm interested so you say like everything is more integrated can you give me an example of how it was before the portal and can you give me a practical example so i can understand better how that integration what that looks like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i think it's um i think something also what you said like yesterday is that i was doing the exercises from the ice cube mm. like i have to I have to do them oh, yeah. da, 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 and even was pushing myself and now i'm like oh yeah I, I, yes i'm gonna do this and of course not always huh? because yeah. for example with the breathing exercise i'm still like i am <laughs> okay, i feel resistant it's not that there's no resistance yeah but there is a softer way of entering yeah i love that uh, there is more more and, and there is more willing willing to than than must i must do yeah like, yeah, because I feel like that is for a lot of women who are like I work with a lot of women who are already doing the meditation and the affirmations and the and all the energy work. But I feel like a lot of women are still doing it from that must like it's just like another thing to do on their to do list. Right. OK, I have to do the meditation because if I don't, then blah, blah, blah. And from that frequency, what you say, you're still doing it from the ice cube energy. So it's not bringing you the transformations that you really desire so um you also said something interesting i am more aware so can you tell me a little bit more about that can you give me maybe a fun example or something where you feel like oh my god this is like this is new that i'm so aware of what i'm doing mm. Yes, I'm more aware of my thinking pattern, mm -hmm. like of my survival mechanism. Oh, yeah. So when I'm, for example, in my controlling yeah, thing, my controlling yeah. part that wants to control and wants to manage and wants to do everything from, I'm very much aware when I enter that state. Uh, yeah. So I feel myself entering in that state. I feel my body tens tensing up. Mm. I feel contraction i feel like this mm, pushing pulling energy mm. 
and much more aware of, for example, the way how I hang my laundry. Like oh, it's yeah. like a super yeah, yeah, thing, yeah. or I do my household. Like, yeah, for, I have this, I have this um, perfectionism or this, this. Uh, how do you say that? This uh, OCD. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. that that OCD uh, with my uh, arecht with my okay, with the counter, like, yeah, yeah. And my my boyfriend or my partner always likes make jokes of it. Like I th I think it's clean now, right? It's like <laughs> but and like, like I do it like three times, and I, so this OCD is really less. I'm like, ah. it's okay, relax, like you know, and just leave the the little dishes for two hours more. It doesn't matter. You can, so it's, uh, yeah, and and yeah, I can leave things more. And mm. oh yeah, and also another example i think is what i now notice in my life is that i i i have that like this motto of like life will take care mm -hmm. and for example is coming a situation in that i need to manage like an unexpected thing or and it's really very practical like for example oh my partner cannot pick up our child and i have to work or whatever or like before, now I go into action mode to find a solution or to create a uh, solution. Yeah. I wait. Ah, uh, interesting. So I wait much more and then life really takes care in such perfect ways. Mm. So wait, I I feel that my 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 being is like stepping back a little bit mm. so that life can do in my energy field to do his thing yeah i love and that because we are in our own way if we step out the universe like everything is actually life is organized perfectly but we are blocking it so it's so beautiful what you say when you step back things can actually work through you so i love that example yeah and i knew that yeah and i was experiencing that already sometimes but then it was like oh you see what's happening and now it's like almost all the time like uh, i am stepping back boom boom boom, yeah, boom, yeah. boom so i see my life like doo, 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 doo. yeah yeah i love that I also, and i also had my days in these 22 days where we are together like where i did like push and pull and mm. i had the whole weekend like for three days i was in this uh, mm. and then i was and doing everything like from that ice cube energy and it was so poor oh, so tiring and so painful actually i really felt pain in my body while acting like that yeah so i think what you're describing as well is that your nervous system is becoming way more relaxed than mm -hmm. it was right yes. yeah yeah interesting and do you notice anything um in the field of your relationship or in your business do you actually see some physical results as well because these are beautiful things in our in your state of being but do you also already see things even though mm -hmm. just more time in your physical reality changing mm -hmm. yes because when i signed up i knew of course you are like a business coach but i felt like okay i'm signing up and yes i for sure want this for my business but I felt like, ah, but the first thing I feel this is going to work in my relationship. Mm -hmm. Like it's, you know, it's for life, right? It's, and they're also to be also stepping back actually, and not sitting like on top of things so much, which I feel frustrated or irritated about, like also, also being more soft and yeah. And, and about our, you know, triggers, that are running the show i i can step back more easily mm, yeah and, um, and that's also creating space for the relationship for him for me for Beautiful. yeah so i'm also in the relationship more in water and mist than ice cube hey and i remember yeah. something and tell me if i can share it or not it was like that thing that you shared about the money block yeah about, you can share everything yeah I'm, I'm not quite sure how the story went but you were like my God, Sophie, something happened so profound because I was, it was something like you were on the road and you literally felt like you were like, you were like the money block <gasps> was resolved. Do you remember? Oh yeah. You I was listening story? to one of the, I was li listening to one of the prayers yeah. about money. Yeah. Uh, and we had to listen to that prayer like every day. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And I was listening to it and I was driving in the car. It was very early in the morning. I was driving in the car and then in the on the road like there was like a big uh cashier cupboard yeah uh it was like really in the middle of the road and i thought okay i can 
you know, I have to stop the car and remove it. Yeah. And it was while I was listening to the money block. Yeah. And I felt like st I was stepping out of the car, taking the thing off the road, putting it ne next to the road. And I felt in my system like, oh yeah, this is my money block. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm my road right now yeah i love that i love that uh, example i love that so much yes. yeah so cool. and i feel another example also like i i still am in the process of creating my offers yeah but i feel like okay i now know already like i feel this marinating like what i want which price I want to put in. And mm. I feel before I could feel like, oh my God, I cannot ask this. No, it's not possible. Let's leave it. And now I feel like, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, I can do this it. Is, I feel yeah. the worthiness of it. Like, yeah. So if I understand yeah. correctly, it's also like helping yeah. you become more confident in allowing your offers and allowing your prices mm -hmm. and not like overthinking about mm -hmm. it, but just letting it come to you and then just trust mm -hmm. what comes to you that that's the right thing to actually ask yeah yeah okay. yeah and how was that before were you before more in your mind about your offers and about your prices yes yeah yeah, yeah. like yeah yeah ah oh, can they my clients pay it do they want to pay it like uh yeah just yeah i mind that. things yeah. hey and yeah. just for my i'm just interested like what do you love most about the way we are working together i'm just curious uh one thing i really love is the um the, also the way how you for example record the um audios the main, yeah. the audios yeah because it's actually really resident i would also do it like that like you know i sometimes you hear your child snoring on the background <laughs> yeah. it's like it's like it's you know that it's it's also my perfection my thing to to work to leave my perfectionism yeah like it works like this it doesn't need to be like in the studio with this little, yeah. it's, it's real it's like and it's real and it's in the moment it's yeah. not like a composed how you yeah. say it it's yeah, like, yeah yeah it's not like uh, okay we're just gonna every day i have to set up and i just have to do it i'm i'm like letting it like that's my commitment as well right i have to turn myself mm -hmm. from ice cube into water into mist and i'm not allowed to record yeah. anything for you guys until i miss mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, I'm loving the experiment so much that I decided to continue with it because I'm like, if this can happen in 22 days, then what the mm -hmm. F will happen if we're going to do it two extra months, right? For 60 days, I'm just mm -hmm. like super curious. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. yeah. Um, is there anything else that you feel like that is something that you would love to share? I'm like curious, like the ripple effect, because you said, I think you said already something about it, but I feel like the ripple effect has to do with your relationship probably. But do you, do your husband, does your husband notice anything different in your energy? Does he say something? Does your child notice it? Or are there still, are there not yet? <laughs> I don't know. My partner was like super sick since, since oh, really? actually since. And he had like a long on staking. Oh wow! Uh, so he was. So we were not so much connecting. Yeah. So, and it was really funny because like for two weeks we did not have any trigger or, and then last Sunday we had one like, and I felt like ah, mm, shoot like what? But I also felt like no, this is also part of the yeah. You know, it's not that it's gone all at once. It's no. it just made clear like. Ah, oh, yeah, here we are, and I can work through it in a softer way. And this is just showing me, like, ah, oh, yeah, these are things that we still need to work, work with. Yeah, and I think that's interesting uh, as well because it's not the things that we're doing. It's not about like making our life perfect because life happens mm -hmm. and it will continue to happen, right? But it's about how do we handle things and are we able to handle mm -hmm. it from a different place? And when we show life and the universe like hey we can handle it in a different way usually it stops coming back at a certain point right because then it's like okay mm. she learned her lesson now we can move on right so a lot of the time mm. in the transformational process you actually see some old triggers coming back to sort of like see for one last time did she really get it <laughs> and mm. then show like yeah i get it and i do it on a different level um yeah. so what is the thing you're most looking forward in 24 like what what are your plans 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to put my work out there, my new focus. Yeah. Like before, I was like having focus on a, a few things, mm. and now I really feel to, for example, I'm going to leave, I think, my whole work in. Oh, it's funny, my mind says, like, are you sure? Mm. Uh, like in the ed education education system, like to, to coach and to train in, in schools, like it was not so much giving me joy, actually, yeah. it was more. From my head like because i worked in this uh, as a teacher for 10 years before and i know i i know the field so well and the other fields of personal development also so i felt i my mind was like you're perfect for this you know how it works in the school so you have to do it mm. but it came from i have to do it because it was really a mind thing and i i feel that i really i can really let it go yeah and to focus on just the uh, working yeah on body work around sexuality sensuality and yeah. it's re i'm looking forward to the focus yeah i love that and to my offers like i'm also really looking forward to create bigger offers because mm -hmm. now i work only like uh like uh, one session here one session there one mm -hmm. like i so i'm really looking forward to bigger offers and to work lo for a longer period of time with my clients yeah so I can also make more impact. I feel now inside myself like I actually the only way I want to work is where I can really make impact. Yeah. And yeah. you know, like impact with one session, it's 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 like a yeah little little opening. And yeah. I love that. And it does it doesn't give me satis satisfaction anymore. Also. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting. And then we're going to wrap it up because we're going to do the visualization. But what I love most when I'm listening to your story is I, of course, spoke to you before we started and you were like mm -hmm. so much in your mind about your different offers. Mm -hmm. And you was like, yeah, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And like, what should I focus on first and what should be my focus? And now you're like, you know what? I know exactly what to do. I'm going to leave that part. I'm going to focus on the body work. I want to make the impact. I'm going to move away from the single sessions and I'm going to work with women who are all in and dedicated. So mm. yes, I love, I love that. Mm. So yeah, thank you.